In 2021, the Formula 1 World Championship came down to the last race, with both leading competitors on even points. An event that has only happened once before in the history of the sport. The competitors in question, Red Bull's Max Verstappen, who while his personality may grate a lot of people with his blunt attitude, is undoubtedly an extremely talented and hard-working driver, who is looking to take the crown from the currently dominant for six years running Mercedes, driven by seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton, looking to solidify his place as one of the greatest of all time by winning his eighth title something that not even the great Schumacher could achieve. The two had battled back and forth all year in a season filled with drama and excitement. On the inside, it comes to the touch! Verstappen is out of the race and that's a big crash! However, this incredible season would end up being mired in controversy, as of only eight laps to go and Hamilton 12 seconds clear of Verstappen Without a technical malfunction or a huge slip up on Hamilton's part, the championship was undoubtedly his. However, on lap 53 of 58, a car would hit the barriers, bringing out a safety car, allowing the cars to keep running while the debris is cleared. Under normal race procedure, there wouldn't be enough laps to finish the race, meaning the race would end behind this safety car, giving Hamilton the win and his championship. However, the race director would go against this procedure for a more exciting end to this year-long spectacle, allowing for one more lap and allowing Max, who was on fresher tyres, to take the win in one final dash to the finish. Hamilton sees him coming! It's a late lunge by Verstappen, who takes the lead of the race! This moment is still talked about to this day, as it's something we had never seen before in the history of the sport. But why am I talking about this in the first minute of a Smash video? Well, maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to the beginning of this story. Or should I call it a quest? A quest to take a throne. A quest to defeat a player who seemed so consistent, toppling him would be like that of toppling a titan. Fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you. Fuck this whole team, man. Zayn Nagami was born in 1996 and started playing Melee in 2014, along with many others, after the Smash documentary in EVO 2013 caused a large influx of players right in the midst of the Five Gods era. An era dominated by a select few players. And like many others, Zayn would aspire to reach that godhood. However, he would get to grips with the game quicker than the average player. Originally going under the tag Tekkens, Zayn would attend his first tournament, Smash at Clarendon, in August of 2014, where he would win one set, before being knocked out. However, this was enough to hook him on Melee. He saw the mountains of Melee skill and got excited at the challenge to take on. In an interview with ESPN, Zayn said that when he started playing, when he starts anything, he wants to be the best. And I'm sure that this attitude throughout his life is what honed his ability to learn so fast. Because after only a year into playing, he was already a tournament threat. At SmashCon 2015, a by no means small tournament with one of the gods M2K and the god slayer himself Leffen, and a large amount of top 50 talent in attendance, he managed to place 33rd. An honestly crazy achievement. To put this into perspective, after just one year of play, most melee players are still struggling with controlling their character and hitting their combos. But here, Zayn was taking out well-renowned players like Cyrain and placing only one place behind top 100 talent like Dizkid Boogie, Crush, and Prince Abu. This astronomic rise would continue, as in only one more year, he would have a breakout performance at one of the biggest events of the year, the Big House Six where he would take down the world rank 6th player plop in pools and go on a run all the way to 17th, putting him on the map and landing him a spot in the top 100 for that year. To give you an idea of how mad that is, here's footage of me, a math main player of 2 years, losing in pools of an EU major one third the size of Big House. Let's just say there's a reason I'm making content. In 2017, he would keep the ball rolling with consistent placings and another big upset on the then world ranked sixth left. Oh, okay, he does like, oh, gets to the tipper! Oh my god! No, it's not over! It's not over! It's not over! Oh god! Oh my god! Zing. Earning him an even bigger hug. 
and another rise in the rankings to top 30 above players like Armsa, Ice, and Armsa. Only for him to rise to the top level that he so desired in 2018. He started the year with an incredible Smash Summit, beating Plup yet again and even one of those gods he looked up to, Mango. And while his run would fall short, being stopped by two of the other gods, Mewtwo King and Armada, he would still finish third, the highest ever for a vote-in player at that Invitational. From there, he never looked back, staying a top threat at every event, and finally getting his first major tournament win in the latter half of the year at Shine 2018. He crouches for dear life and he gets the other assassin save! Save win Shine! Beating Mango again and impressively double eliminating the then dominant best player in the world, Hungrybox, in a matchup he had a stranglehold on for four years prior. Landing Zane a place in the top 10 in the world at 7th. This rise is nothing short of insane. If you play Melee, I'm sure you can think of where you were four years into the game, and think that how Zane did this is essentially just black magic. Four years into my time with Melee, I was still inconsistently making out of pools at UK regionals. And here's this guy winning majors over gods of the game. If people couldn't see Zane's rise to be a dominant force in the game coming, they would have to be blind, deaf, and lobotomized. Zane would be as strong as ever in 2019, However, he struggled in the clutch and lost multiple majors to being beaten in those nerve-destroying moments by more experienced players. Back that air, so really tricky! Nice. Oh, oh no! Wow! Oh, that was the wrong way. I don't believe it. Of all the ways for the tournament to end. However, Zayn had positioned himself to sooner than later take another big tournament. And with the departure of the ever-present Armada and Muta King's dwindling interest in tournaments, there was a clear spot in the pantheon of the game or even above that. He had shown his ability to completely reinvent and improve his play to overcome challenges in the past, so it was only a matter of time until his moment came. Luckily for him, 2020 wouldn't make him wait very long. Winner semis. Winner of this is going to be playing Mangos. With the way HBox would play against Mars, a lot of people considered it nearly unwinnable at the top level. He lives again, trying to get the up and smash. look at the pop up! Zane's adaptation specifically to HBOX. This man studies, this man adapts. This guy this grinds! Man. Up there, going real high. Oh, that's gonna be him! Zane! In January of 2020 at Genesis, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, Zayn would beat a driven Mango and the inevitable himself Hungrybox to win the whole event. One of the greatest achievements you can ask for as a melee player, and while people would expect Zayn to rise to be a dominant force, I don't think that anyone expected what was to come in 2020. Not even Scar, who so elegantly said, Everyone knows that Zayn is a problem now! <laughs> Zayn wasn't a problem. He was about to become THE problem. Hungrybox would win the Smash Summit a few weeks later, but after that, little did we know that it would be the last win in a long time for the three-time world champ. As with the world going into shutdown, the dawn of the online era of Smash Bros would begin, and with it, our titan would truly be formed. Zayn would win all but two events he entered with Marth in the online era of 2020, dropping only one week of the Slippy Champions League to Mango and the final tournament of the year. This year was a near perfect season for him. It was absolutely absurd and truly felt like no one could touch him. A red Marth dominating the game once again, much like the King of Smash Ken from the Smash documentary that had inspired him to start playing all those years ago. Zane had taken his goals and smashed them. His play was so consistent and precise, it was a wonder how anyone could ever truly best him. Taking Marth to new heights that we hadn't seen. 
His dash dance was unlike that of even the neutral god PPMD, using every inch of space on the stage to his advantage, along with a devastating punish that just eked out every inch of Marth's combo ability, utilizing every move for the best outcome. His success against two of the most common characters in the game, Fox and Falco, is nothing to scoff at either. His dominance in the Fox matchup is unprecedented. The last time that he lost to a Fox being Leffen in May of last year. Even more so, he had taken up Muta King's old mantle of FD King. Because even longer than that, he hadn't dropped a single game to a Fox on FD since 2018, giving him a massive advantage in the matchup. This man simply did not lose to the widely regarded best character in the game. That wasn't the end of it though, as during that same year, Zayn decided to show the world just how big the gap between him and everyone else was. When he entered multiple tournaments with his Roy under the tag, don't test me. Including one Rona Rumble, where he not only would show that this widely regarded bottom 10 character could compete with the best, but could win. He would beat rank 35 Toussaint, 29 KGH, and 21st Ginger twice to win a tournament with Roy. And maybe even more impressively, would take Hungrybox to Game 5 last stock later in the year, creating this divergent timeline where if that last stock goes different, Hungrybox probably quits Melee for good, becoming an alt streamer and commentator forever. And thankfully we don't live in that timeline. <laughs> he had shown just how strong he was. That his raw, fundamental understanding of the game alone would allow him to beat the large majority of players. Thus beginning the quest to beat Melee's modern titan, Zane Nagami. But who can step up to challenge his throne? Let's introduce our challengers at this point in the story. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Mango. One of the most well-known players in esports, he's been a dominant force in Melee for 15 years now. Known for his blisteringly fast play and pressure using Fox and Falco to dismantle his opponents with aggressive play. He had been the only person in 2020 to show that he could stand on par with Zayn and make that iron consistency crack. The only two online tournaments Zayn lost in 2020, he lost to Mango. And while Hungrybox has been looking like a shadow of his former self in the online era, there's hope for a return of LAN events in 2021. So counting Hungrybox out just because of his slump is something you should never do to a god level player. Those are the obvious, and while there were players who could take sets from Zayn, those players didn't look like they were in a position or aren't consistent enough to make a challenge for the throne. However, there was one player who while yet to beat him looked like it was only a matter of time. A player who may as well be referred to as Zayn's shadow, and that's IBDW. I call IBDW, or Cody Schwab, Zane's shadow because at this point his come up story is terrifyingly similar to Zane's. That I feel the only reason people didn't notice him as much was because Zane had done it first. You see, IBDW started playing melee one year after Zane, and in his first year he was already achieving amazing results taking sets off of top 30 players. In his second year playing the game, he got ranked in the top 100 for the first time. In his third year, he broke into the top 50 and was taking regionals over top 20 players. And while in his fourth year, he wasn't taking tournaments over gods, he was beating them. At his breakout tournament Smash Summer 8, he beat both Mango and Hbox in a crazy run where he started round one in losers. However, unfortunately, there was more than just those two to beat for Cody, who fell in fourth. Then, finally, in 2020, during the year of Zayn, he showed that he was probably the closest to those top two by consistently placing third behind them at the Slippy Champions Leagues. Taking a tournament over Hungrybox in very impressive fashion, and even finding a second place finish at the Ludwig event where Zayn fell short. Cody's almost scary shadowing of Zane seemed to be flying under the radar for most at this time, including myself, due to the exciting Mango and Zane rivalry and Cody's position as someone just 
unable to beat them, but gatekeep everyone else. If Cody could break through that gate, he could definitely be a player in the attempt to topple our Titan going into 2021. 2021 would start quietly. For the first four months, there weren't really any stacked tryhard events. Zayn would enter more tournaments with his Roy, and even his Fox. And Mango would take the months off from competing altogether. With the top two not taking the competition seriously, the rest of the scene entered just individual, small netplay events in what was more of an off-season. However, a second round of the Slippy Champions League would soon put a stop to it, and bring back competition in the online space. Here is where we would see the first real crack in our titan, as like last time, Zayn would drop the first week of the league to Mango, and even drop the third in a nail-biter set with an on-fire Wizrobe. However, he would still hold steadfast and take the second week as well as the final week after a two-set grand finals, where the people saw hope for Mango, Zayn would remind people that he could switch it on at any time and immediately beat the ever-loving breaks off of Mango in a second set that would make you completely forget the first. In the background, Cody was keeping up his placings, only losing to Zayn and Mango, while Hungrybox struggled, being relegated from Division 1 by Moki in Week 1 and being unable to qualify back to Division 1 for the following weeks until the last one. People were really starting to doubt the former free time number one while he awaited a return to LAN after a rough time in the online era. Luckily for him, he wouldn't need to wait long, as only two months after the Slippy League and just over a year of online melee, it was about to finally return to where it belonged. Two players sat next to each other in front of one hella old TV, putting their ego on the line to see who's the best. And what better tournament to welcome us back than Smash Summit 11. Oh Are you serious? Be fast. Whoa! Running? That's Nothing weird about it. Nothing weird. It's just oh, 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 The hype behind Summit 11 could not be understated, and the storylines to follow were too numerous to count. With many people believing that online wasn't as valid as LAN play, we would finally see if the year's prior results held up. Would people who struggled online like Hungrybox and Axe return to their old form and stomp the competition? Armsa was returning after being even more isolated from competition for the past year, all the way over in Japan. Plup, who had been MIA, was also back. So I think everybody sucks right now, and yes. if I lose, <laughs> then it's an upset. Oh, and did I mention this was the biggest prize pool in Melee history? But more than anything, all eyes were on Mango and Zayn to see who would take the first tournament back. Zayn would look extremely strong in his pool, only stumbling against Amsa, who showed that his time away from the best hadn't slowed him down at all, taking Zayn to Game 5. Mango looked good as well, but also had a tough run-in with Moki, pulling another Game 5. We also saw Mango use Fox for the Marth in his pool, Kadoran, as he had talked prior about using it in the future for Zayn. His match with Hungrybox was pretty clean, however Hbox didn't make things easy. There was definitely some life in the old god yet. He's going right in there. In pool D, however, Plup had come to show that he wasn't to be forgotten as a top level threat. Still as strong as ever, he would take out IBDW to claim his seed for an easier path in bracket. In the event's gauntlet stage, we would see Amsa once again prove that he hadn't rusted at all as he took out Mango's Fox to take his seed going into the final bracket, causing people to start to doubt Mango's Fox. Feeling his rust on the character could prevent us from seeing the grand finals that we all wanted. In this tournament's final bracket, it got even worse. Mango's Fox would fall to Plup in winner's round one, sending him straight to losers in a very shaky set that would not have you have faith in Mango to come back. To make matters worse, our Titan had really gotten into form.
Zayn looked certifiably unstoppable. There were no nerves brought to the real stage for Zayn as he cleaned through his competition to winner's finals, where he would meet a familiar but unlikely opponent. Oh, what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? Hungrybox was back, beating an on-fire armster and a personal demon in IBDW to show that his online resume wasn't who he was, and he was here to play. Unfortunately for this god though, Melee's titan was going to need more than a former great returning to form to stop him. Definitely not the same Zayn from a couple years ago. Ooh. Oh! Wow. Oh! Zane. Zane showed no weakness and pushed through to grand finals. At which point, it truly felt like for everyone watching that whoever reached him would just be a formality at this point. He like, either will be the Summit 11 champion or one of our three final competitors is going to have to take two sets uh -huh. from the best Marth in the world. However, rising through the loser's bracket was none other than his rival through the online era. Yet another old god who just refused to go down. Mango had been running a masterclass through losers, using his Falco to regain his composure, then switching to Fox again for top four. Now looking like a different player than the one who entered the bracket. It's going to be an incredible grand finals, um, and it's the way it should be, except those, these are the uh, two best players in the studio right now, and that's what grand finals should have. He would even make the call to stay Fox versus Zayn, a decision in which I'm sure many would call him insane. I mean, Zayn still had not lost to a fox since 2019. For Mango to do this, he would need to somehow repeat tournaments of the past and make this titan remember the fear of loser's bracket Mango. That's it. That's it. Same takes oh, game one. Wow. Oh, 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 no, she'll oh, grab the mango. Oh, That's yeah. it. Same oh, takes oh. Mango looked by no means weak. In fact, both games going into the last stock, he was even or up but Zayn just outclutched him. And now if Mango wanted to win even the first set, he would need to beat Zayn on Final Destination twice. Something most people considered near impossible with Fox due to Marth having an incredible punish on the stage. On top of that, Zayn hadn't lost to a Fox on that stage specifically in three years. Okay, Mango's on the board. And here we go. We got those though. Zane at 117 oh. to one ton bomb. Does he have a jump? Oh, okay, oh, we're going to game five star. Mango hanging on. Away. From Mango. Oh, yo! Yo, he's cooking! He's cooking! Oh he's goodness. cooking! Just listen to Brandon. Oh! oh. We got a second! We got a reset! Mango would do the unthinkable. Through absolutely mind blowing play, he would push Zayn out for the reverse 3 0 in set one. But he had only stunned the Titan. We had been here before, especially with a player like Mango, there was only two options. Mango was either getting decimated 3-0, or this was going down to the wire. Oh, 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 oh,
man. Good oh, choice. This Zane is the oh, empty game I think Zane was looking for. He lost two, which is an, an, an anomaly. That's crazy, yeah. Alright, 2-1 Zane, empty off the field, but... In five, will this be a 10-game set again? Oh! Between these two players, it's looking like it might be! Oh, he did quit the Mangos, yes, he's still going for it. Zane has like almost no oh shield. My God. Oh, That's it. It. We're going to game 10. Oh my goodness! This is field. the sickest Grand Finals I have ever <laughs> watched. Oh. But that is! We're going to last stop. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Mango had shown that this quest was not an impossible one. That even a player at the caliber and consistency of Zayn was susceptible to cracking under the pressure of a nail-biting grand finals. The two players have put on one hell of a show for everyone in a grand finals that will be remembered as one of the greatest sets of all time. However, this isn't a quest to beat Melee's Titan once. This is a quest to conquer him. To take the title of the best in the world from Zayn would need more than just one win. So what would the rest of 2021 have to show us? Well, unfortunately for us, Mango and Zayn would take a short break after that impressive showing, resting up for the end of the year. In the meantime, IBDW would come into his own, taking his first major at Riptide over Hungrybox and Plup, reminding us just how much of a threat he was. Speaking of that, Zane would also be quick to remind us that he had not been conquered just yet, as at the Smash World Tour Eastern Division Finals, he would decimate the competition, only dropping three games. In the absence of Mango, it seemed like no one could stop him, and with this win, it would be a little hard for Mango to argue the number one spot for the year. Yet, there was still another summit to come before the end of the year, and this one would be quite different from the last. This summit would be all about one player who was yet to see his crowning achievement. After a great run through Hungrybox, Leffen, and Armsa, who himself was on a mighty run beating both Mango and Hbox, Cody was in winner's finals, facing off against his demon, Zayn. A man who at this point he had never managed to beat. With a record of 0-11, to to win this set, Cody would need to finally claw his way out from Zayn's shadow. And after an extremely strong game 1 from Zayn, it felt like it could be more of the same. However, for Game 2 and Cody's turn to choose the stage, he was about to do something which would question if Cody was a mentally sound individual. Oh, wait. wait. Makes Cody wait. picked wait FD. What? 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 Wait, wait I just, it just hit me what happened. Why? Why are they... <laughs> he had fatted. He takes himself to the execution ground. We had seen some players do this before, like S-Fat versus Mewtwo King, and I mean, it, it never went well. However, a strategy like this can have a big payoff. If you win on your opponent's counterpick, that's bound to rattle them a little bit, make them doubt themselves. And mental game at this level is a big part of competition. If Cody could pull it off, it might even win in the set. He's cleaned him up! Yeah, he's yeah. him up. This is... Okay. <laughs> Cody might be the craziest motherfucker on earth, but he pulled through. You can tell from his play that he had studied Zane's set with Mango a few months prior. 
and was doing a great job at emulating that style of a more grounded neutral using dash dances combined with incredible aerial drift to bait Zane's options. Along with Cody's solid punish from years on the character allowed him to pull off this counter pick. However, Zane wouldn't be rattled and it was a quick and decisive run back for him. Cody's gambit may have worked, but now he'll need to do it two more games in a row. Could he pull through with his new and improved game plan? Cody did it. He had overcome his bracket demon to put a dent into the gate to the top two. However, he would still need to win the grand finals. And to do it, he would need to knock down the rest of that gate in the same day. As after yet another run through losers, Mango had made it back to grand finals, overcoming Zayn with his Falco this time. This wouldn't be much easier for Cody. His record with Mango was once again a staggering 1-13. The one being from 2019. Could Cody prove to himself and the world that he was no longer a gatekeeper living in the shadow of a titan? Wow, this would, this would be the first time that Whoa. I... But this is Mango we're talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh that's it! IBDW, a quick wow. one! Oh, maybe the dude. Cody makes it look like that record never existed, with a dominant showing over Mango and busts in that gate. He had finally gotten that big win he had been looking for, and from here on, he was not going to slow down. So, now here we are, at the end of 2021, and it was clear now that this titan was no longer such. He was merely a king, barely clutching onto his crown from the hungry competition beneath him. Many doubting who even was number one for the year, Mango or Zane. You probably would get a different answer depending on who you asked. With no official ranking, it's hard to draw a true conclusion. Yet despite this, despite him not looking as dominant as he had in 2020, Zane was clearly still the favourite in every event he entered. There was something about Zane's play, his aura was something that I could only compare to Armada's. That even if by the numbers he might not be the favourite at times, at no point did the audience ever doubt him. Not once did people think Zane was done. Every win over him felt like some kind of miracle that it could even happen. I didn't expect to see Zane not in grands though. Yeah, I mean, Zane neither. is always like, who's playing Zane? Yeah, yeah, who's playing Zane for real? This yeah. is the director Zane's got at third. However, going into 2022, Zane's second year at number one felt closer than ever. Truly, anything could happen with players like Cody and Mango snapping at his heels. And yet, what happened in 2022 was even crazier than anything we could have imagined and it was set into motion by the emergence of a new threat to the crown that only the most astute of melee bracket nerds could have even potentially seen coming and to the rest of the world seemed like he almost appeared from a poof of smoke. Real quick before the second half of the video I just want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon because without it videos like this wouldn't be possible. I mean I'm sure you can tell there's quite a big gap between this video and the last and in between that I'm not exactly making much money. So if you have a pound spare to donate, I mean, I would greatly appreciate it and allow me to keep making stuff of this size and quality for you guys. So yeah, be like these guys and donate to my Patreon because I like making stuff. On with the other half of the video. 2022, the first year that we truly returned to LAN. 
and this was marked by the return of the beloved major series Genesis, with Genesis 8 to start the year off big. Winning Genesis will give you a big mark on your end of year rankings for its prestige and size, so winning this would set the tone for the year. The tournament kicked off how tournaments these sizes do, and that's with a big upset. Mango, ever the buster, dropped down into losers in pools to a chic player called Fizzwiggle. Fizzwiggle. The rest of the top 64 the top 8 wouldn't be exempt from all this action either. None took advantage of the Falcon Slayer Mango falling out of winners to beat Hungrybox and make winners side top 8. Zane beat Armser, who then also made it through losers. Cody beat out Kalamazoo, who would also make it in through losers on an incredible run of his own. Hungrybox and Mango would meet for the top 8 qualifier, where Mango would run out of gas on an exhausting loser's run, and drop his first set to the box in 3 years. And Lod, another Peach player who had been looking great online and during his return to LAN, made it in through losers. Overall, the top 8 had all the important players except one. However, there was one unfamiliar face in the lineup. Who the fuck is Jmook? You would not be alone if you asked this question, as this was Jmook's tournament history up to Genesis. You could almost count the tournaments on one hand. If you didn't follow locals or know the meme of the J Sheiks, then you likely may have never heard of him. Yet here he was, an unranked player, seeded 21st, and how did he get here? Oh, the Come new one! one. I hope Steph can shoot like that tonight, no. oh, is, like, is, is it an upset of flying sad about it? Grab oh, oh, that's, that's it! There. No space! Oh, it's a little pop-up! Crowd, crowd, crowd favorites. And what are we gonna oh. do? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can see why oh. people are on game with the band. Head you know, on, maybe a little bit too much. Was that actually No! Crazy? No, he's gonna have to argue! That's he it! Won. Winner, top Beating the 5th seed Plup and 13th seed Lod in two Game 5 bangers, Jamer blasted onto the scene. And not only that, he wasn't done yet. He would cruise through none to face Zayn in winner's finals who had just got done playing an incredible Game 5 set with Cody. Cody showing his win at Summit was no fluke and Zayn showing he's on form to win this thing. How would our new contender fare in front of the king? What looked like a rough start quickly became what might have been a winnable set for him. The form in game 3 looked amazing and FD started out great. However, maybe the pressure was just too much for the mook. This is why Zayn is the king after all, he's an iron wall of consistency and you need to be ready for him. Beating him on your first time was always unlikely to happen. And with the old gatekeeper Cody making his wave to losers finals, his incredible run has probably hit a wall here. Sure they play each other at locals, but this is the big stage, there's no way. Oh no, this is just ridiculous. Oh, watch the teeth just walk up slowly, Brandon! He did. Oh, okay. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh he's about to- no! Oh, stop! Stop! That's, that's gonna, gonna do that's it! That's gonna do it! Jmook free owing Cody to make, quite possibly, the Cinderella run of Cinderella runs. In a game like Melee, where the levels between top players is so distinct and consistent that upsets between levels are rare. A player coming out of nowhere and placing second is unheard of. Literally, he was the lowest seeded player to ever make grand finals at a major. Would Jmook, however, be able to prove that this wasn't a fluke going into the rest of the year? Let's also not forget that our king has started this year off with a huge win and is looking as good as ever. It wouldn't stop there though, he would go on to win Pound 2022 over Hungrybox who looked just lost in Grand Finals. Pound would also see Mango drop the ball once again, a rough start to the year for the god. As well as Amsa once again showing that he can play with the best, grabbing third at this event, he was slowly looking like even he may be a tournament winning threat if things lined up for him. 
Thus, the first third of the year would end in a resounding win for our king, as while low on events, he would take them both. However, things were about to change rapidly, heading into the summer of Smash, as in the sun, the seeds of a revolution had started to grow. And it would all start at the series that always slips away from Zayn, Smash Summit 13, where we would see an old face come back to take vengeance on our king. Zane's first wins, Plup would come back to send him to losers, where he would have to face off against Jamuk in the first event that we had seen him since Genesis. He wasn't just here to prove that it wasn't a fluke, he was here to win. Jamuk would confidently eliminate Zayn from the tournament at 5th place. Not only that, Cody would go on a confident and emotional run to win the event, after revealing that he had been taking care of his deteriorating father, who had had a stroke and was diagnosed with cancer last year. But um, at the risk of sounding like too emotional, I just want to say I love you, Dad, and uh, I'll miss you. Glad we reconnected, and uh, thank you. I hope you, uh, hope you're, uh, able enough to watch this. Cody would dedicate the event to his dad, momentarily overcoming what must have been extremely emotionally taxing, and putting himself in the race for this year. Losing to two sheiks in a row might have you think that Zayn could be seeing an arising problem. Then you'd be right. Oh, the down tilt? The oh downer? my god! Oh, the one more! I don't know if he does even I, I think that's it! No! That's it and Leffen wins Battle of BC! Zane would lose Battle of BC to Leffen's Sheik, a character picked up specifically to deal with Marth. Rather than risking Marth's deadly punish game on Fox, Leffen opted to go for what many deem to be a slightly losing matchup for Marth to great success. And unfortunately for Zane, it wasn't just a simple loss. Leffen's Sheik was different, a machine created purely to destroy the sword-wielding king, and not only was it effective, it had brought new technology to the matchup. To increase the punish effectiveness with tight down throw up airs as well as fleshed out edgeguard flow charts. This loss wouldn't be an isolated incident, it was only a matter of time before the Sheik players started to pick up these advancements in the matchup. Right there, down, right there, down. <laughs> And unfortunately for Zayn, in these coming months, that isn't the only thing that's going to make it hard. At Gommel, he would lose to Jamuk twice, allowing him to take the set lead and for Hungrybox to take his first major since returning to LAN. He would then follow up that win with another at Wave Dash, a tournament with Zayn absent, tying up his wins. At Double Down, Zayn would lose to Armsa and an Ice Climber player called Slug, while Cody would go on to win over Armsa, who for the first time ever had got a Yoshi into Grand Finals of a Major. At Phantom, he would lose twice to Cody, allowing him to take the lead in this year's fight for the crown, and showing just how far he had come in the Marth Fox matchup. However, unfortunately, Cody's luck this year would continue to be rough, as he would need to get surgery for a hernia, meaning that he would be put out of action completely until the latter half of the year due to being unable to be put under any high stress. Finally, at Super Smash Con, he would lose a massive upset to the Peach player Wally, fighting his way all the way back to losers finals in a monstrous losers run, only to lose his first set to Hungrybox since Genesis 7 in 2020, and having Mango take home the whole event. It had now been four whole months since Zayn had won a major, and the fight for number one was looking extremely tight. Everyone's records looked rather similar, with a few bad losses and four people in the competition with major wins. However, what I want to highlight here is the attitude towards Zayn never shifted in this time. Every loss was as shocking as the last, and every time he was knocked into losers, people just thought he would bring the tournament back. I remember commentators shocking each other with the fact that he hadn't won an event in four months. 
Hero, rank one MPGR, going home. Yeah, that's right, Zane is out of this tournament. That's because his consistency hadn't dropped one bit. Unlike his competitors, Zane had never dropped outside of the top six of an event. Beat him in pools, Zane will make it back. So if he could get it together for the end of the year, he was far from losing his crown yet. And what better event to get back into one of the closest races ever than the one that started it all. Yo, don't think he needs to switch. He doesn't need I yeah! don't think he needs to switch. I'm seeing an H-Box that is over this game too. Oh! The tiniest forward tilt from H-Box. Oh, and that's oh. going to do it. Zan will be moving on. If you oh, the double dip. Zane would roar back into force with the win he so desperately needed at Shine 2022 by overcoming JMook and maybe even more monumentally, Axe, who had up to this point had a nearly 10 year record of never losing to Marth and had always clutched up when he needed to against Zane before 2020. This just showed how far Zane had come. He'd grinded out this matchup endlessly to do something that every other Ma failed at to even up his race for the crown. Going into the last quarter, we have Mango at one win, Hungrybox at two, and Cody and Zane with three. Both of these players have very similar losses, so at this point, it's really anyone's to take. However, with seven big tournaments to go, it was easily still anyone's game. In fact, maybe there was even room for a new threat to emerge in the final hour. The first tournament to kick off the last leg, Riptide, would see Zane's weakness to a certain matchups once again come forward. With a loss to S2J and JMook once again, Zane would drop out at 6th. And in his and Cody's absence, as seemed to be the story so far, the box would swing in and take the title. Riptide, however, was the precursor to the tournament that would set the tone for the rest of the year. The Big House 10. The Big House is regarded as the same level as Genesis as being a Super Bowl level event to win in the melee sphere, and this one was no exception. In fact, this was being regarded as the hardest tournament to win ever. Because yeah. this is what I truly believe. I think this is the most stacked tournament we've ever had. The level of talent attending Big House was crazy. All eight players who had reached a grand final at a major this year, and plenty of people who had taken sets off of those people ready to take them down. So, who would be the one to take it and gain a big advantage in the race for number one? Could our king get stable footing back like he had at the end of the year? Could Cody, despite his three month break from competing, go on a miracle run? There were plenty of options. Yet, the one people may have least expected is what would come to fruition. But not down. <laughs> oh! What? Oh shit. no! Five, four, oh, three, three two, one!
major, the hardest tournament we've ever seen in 22 years. At his first major since moving to North America, AMSA would make history by winning a major with Yoshi for the first time in the game's history. And with that, suddenly, a Yoshi was in the running for the crown. The only reason I'm not making more of a section out of this is that I already made a video on it when it happened, so go check out that or any of the other tens of videos that were made when it happened. After you finish this one, of course. That wasn't the end of what happened at the big house though, because Mango showed that he was here to play for the rest of the year. Beating Zayn and Cody in what could have been an incredible run for another big house win. Speaking of Cody, that break clearly hadn't pulled him to a halt, as he was able to place third with another set over Zayn, who would manage fourth. How much things had changed since just six months ago, where Zayn was taking Genesis with what looked like ease, we now were seeing Yoshi win it all, and the competition really was going to heat up going into the Ludwig Smash Invitational. Ludwig's tournament series had finally hit LAN, and with it came an abundance of talent, once again following one stacked tournament with another only two weeks later. This one would see all kinds of madness go down due to its interesting format, deciding to use Swiss into a main bracket instead of your standard double elimination, causing lots of repeat matchups and some people to get pretty heated over their runs. This terrible, terrible tournament. What? Terrible format. No. Terrible everything. You don't mean these things. I mean everything. You're saying hurtful things to be hurtful, but you don't mean them. Good. Why didn't you like Swiss? Because I beat Zayn and Cody and got seventh. For example, we would see Mango and Hungrybox both beat Zayn in the Swiss stage, but Mango would have to play Armsa in round one of Bracket, dropping him into losers early and Zayn would be able to gather his form despite having lost two sets already that would normally eliminate you from a tournament and play like the titan he once was running through winners to take the tournament. I hate that Meng sat on the couch said it's doomed and he's just straight up right. Oh my god, the empty hop that's and that's gonna do it! Right. Well, Mango and Cody didn't have a great time. That's four tournaments down and four different winners. With the final summit of the year coming up, would we see that be a fifth? Smash Summit 14 would be rather uneventful at the time, but looking back, this was the last ever Melee Smash Summit. And once again, Zayn would fall short, unable to take a Summit win in his career. He's easily the best player to never win a Smash Summit. With this one crowning Mango, who was slowly creeping up on the competition, with that being now his third major win and a great record against Cody, we could be looking at a later charge for the championship from the old god. However, in what could be a crucial decision, he would choose not to attend Apex 2022. In which another ton of events would end up going to... Oh, I thought he was dead there, yo. No jump from I thought Zane. the game was over. No jump Wait from a minute. Zane. He got one more recovery left. Nice tag, but it does not enough. And also, the Apex 2022 champion. Amsa would win his second major with Yoshi to get that repeat win. If you'd put odds on this at the time, I think whoever bet on it could be a millionaire. Not only that, his run was arguably more impressive this time, beating Hungrybox and Zane. So with only two more tournaments to go, who was still clambering for that crown? Well, somehow, there's a world where literally anyone could take it. Arms's late charge has him with two majors, so he could even up Zayn, and with the head-to-head -head advantage, it could be close to cool. Hungrybox, Mango, and Cody are all sat at three, so if either of them won both, they could clear Zayn. However, there is a key detail, in that Hungrybox would need to clear Zayn to get number one due to a weaker win in Wave Dash, which according to Liquipedia is only a national. Also, if Mango or Cody only equal Zayn, then Zayn would edge them out with his still terrifying consistency, still not ever dropping out lower than 5th. In other words, Zayn was still very much in the lead, with his 4 wins, as any of these players would need to get 2 consecutive major wins to take his crown. However, a spanner was about to be thrown in the works. Zayn would be unable to attend either of the last two events of the year due to a family emergency. I can only imagine what a mixed bag of emotions this would be to everyone, as while you want to take that crown from Zayn, Smash Bros 
isn't the kind of esports that people are playing for the pure glory or money. It's about that personal journey, that pridefulness to beat the best and prove that you are. I think everyone would know that if they did this now, it wouldn't feel as good as if he was there to properly defend the title himself. However, in the same vein, I'm sure Zayn wouldn't want people to not try and do a disservice to the people eagerly watching at home to end this climactic year in a puff of smoke rather than a bang. So in the end, everyone would give their all, even in the unfortunate absence of the king. You have to remember as well that just cause he wasn't there doesn't mean it was a wrap. This quest to beat Zayn was never a collaborative effort. As I just said, Smash Bros is all about pride. It's all about your journey. So there was no way in hell that any of these players were about to roll over and let someone else take that crown. For they would rather keep the king on his throne than see another steal it first. And so the final two tournaments would continue and main stage would decide who was going to step up and try to get those last two wins. The top six would see all four of our competitors make it, and with Cody and Mango and winners, and Armster and Hungrybox in losers, who would be the one to clutch it out was anyone's guess. Mango takes main stage. With two Game 5 sets versus Cody, he is now the only person who has any chance to take the title away from Zayn. Will he be able to take Ludwig's scuffed world tour and claim that number one title from Zayn? Okay, so Mango didn't exactly take the tournament uber seriously. So that was it. Zayn once again had held on to his crown through quite possibly the closest ever call we have ever had for number one. He had shown that his willpower to never miss a day of practice would allow him to have that consistency to hold on to that number one spot. This three year run would easily place Zayn's legacy as one of the greats of the game up there with that of the five gods and the king of Smash. However, we had seen throughout this year that the competition was fierce. And so if he wanted to extend this legacy anymore, he could not afford a single slip up. His iron consistency couldn't show any cracks or one of these hungry players would undoubtedly catch him. 
But if he could claw his way through something like 2022, he can claw his way through anything. Surely it couldn't get any closer. Surely it couldn't get any more stressful. Surely there wouldn't be anything that could throw the standard we had known for years into disarray. 2023 and we are once again back at the starting line with the legendary tournament series that sets the tone for the year to come, Genesis 9. Where a certain charming young man would make a great prediction to a small audience. Specifically, I think Jmook is probably one of the most eyes on him. But I think once he's able to crack that block that's stopping him, he'll be a formidable force. And our top 5 will once again turn to a top 6. What a smart young lad. I'm sure there's great things in his future. So, if you didn't guess, this tournament was Jmook's. Jmook's run at Genesis 9 was in partnership with a sandbagging Bango, who clearly burnt out from the year prior and annoyed from, in his eyes, being snubbed from second on the end of year rankings, would decide to play his Dr. Mario, lovingly called Doc Lee, meaning he would drop out of the tournament at 128th, giving Jmook a slightly easier path to top 8. However, once in top 8, he would put on a masterclass. Once again, overcoming the king and mopping up Moki and newly sponsored Cody to take his first major win. And the first win for a solo Sheik main in 18 years. He wouldn't stop there either, as despite going down to losers early at Collision 2023, he would beat Cody again and reset Zayn to reverse free over him in the second set of Grands. Clearly, this was going to be the year of James. Unfortunately, Jmook wouldn't be able to carry his momentum throughout the rest of the year, and would struggle against a whole slew of players, being upset quite a few times in the winner's side, and even more unfortunately, when it came time for his chance to take home a major, he would consistently be plagued with controller issues. But aren't I getting a bit ahead of myself here? Spoiling a player's whole year isn't something I've done in the whole... this long into the video. Well, that's because the Genesis tone setting prophecy this time didn't occur in grand finals. It occurred in losers quarters. This was the first time Cody and Zane would play this year and was also the first time that Cody would free O Zane. If he hadn't shown his ability to beat Zayn by now, this was the set cementing Cody's ability as a force to be reckoned with. Wait, why did I say first set? Why is this the prophecy? Well, 2023 wouldn't be a group quest to overthrow a king. It would be a brutal fight with blows traded back and forth between two people who were fated to fight for that position. With Mango burnt out, Jmook floundering throughout the year, Armsa remaining a strong threat but cooling off from his hot streak, and Hbox focusing a lot on his own tournament series, that left two players to brawl for the position of number one. A Titan and his Shadow. That's oh! Let's go! Let's go! While the year would start with Jane Mook's victories, even at both of these tournaments, Cody and Zayn would face each other, winning one set each. 
However, the rest of this year's majors were ready to be dominated by these two. Starting at Major Upset, which Cody would take in a winner's side run with Zayn's absence. Oh my god! What a trap card! Oh my god! Cody Schwab! What a trap card! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! What a trap card! Oh my god! Holy shit! Cody However, the joy from winning would not last for long, as unfortunately for him, his new sponsor, CLG, would be abruptly shut down without warning, leaving him from winning a major to being out of a solid sponsor within 24 hours. With everything that happened last year causing Panda to shut down only a few months prior, as well as his surgery, Cody was building up a reputation for the unfortunate, as well as a reputation for not letting life stop him as it would be only a few more months before the next major battle of BC, where we would see him and Zayn clash again, and they would go band for band in two nail-biter Game 5 sets. I think it's about time to clock out Zayn with, the, oh, with just the forward tilt instead. Wait, part about that is that you're Whoa. not expecting Read the, the second hitbox. Where's oh, the shot? He did just the grab! He did it land! He did it land! Got the spot dodge, okay. Ooh, the, the slide off. off. Bear from Cody. And that is going to be it. Cody holding on to the edge. Though they would go one for one, Cody would end up winning the loser's set, allowing him to take home the tournament. Which might not have happened had Zayn been able to handle Amsa, who was carrying over his ability to topple Zayn from last year and be a fawn in his side. This means that we were nearly halfway through the year, and our titan, our king, was yet to win a single major. The longest he had gone since 2020, and... Boy, was he not about to sit down and let that be the case for much longer. Oh, oh, how did that hit? Oh, 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 oh my god, no, the humanity! Oh, oh, oh my god! Our maximum. 10 games left in one of the biggest tournaments of the year, run by a guy. Oh, is it too good? He's leaving out! Oh. Zane. Zane, channels the shark. Zane would look like his old self, destroying the bracket, with not a single person taking him to game 5 to take his first major of the year. We would also see Mango poke his head back into the game after his break, taking home a cool second place. However, the real shock of the tournament was Cody, who bowed out at 16th place, losing to Polish and Kadorin. Cody would later take to Twitter to state how he was unsure of his future in the game. With his team situation, despite potentially being the best player in the world right now, he was still unable to find a team to sponsor him to travel to events, unlike the other top players. He didn't know if this year would be his last year playing Melee, putting immense pressure on him and to succeed for the prize money and to look good for potential prospects. Everyone could see the amount of pressure Cody had placed on himself along with the burnout effects that this could be having on him. The question would be, could he overcome these challenges for the latter half of the year? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to LACS 5 presented by the all-new Toyota Prius. It's finals day! LACS wouldn't result in a win for either of our main parties, as the Swede to never be forgotten Leffen would come in to take the event and remind people that he really is just that good at this game. Zayn and Cody would play at this event, though, in yet another incredibly close Game 5 set that would go towards Zayn allowing him a solid difference in the head-to-head, -head, which at this point in the year was looking like it could be a real possibility for a deciding factor in who gets that crown. There were now six more tournaments left for the year, but little did we know, we were about to witness a true return to form. Zane would get plastered and beatbox his way to victory at Fate Free by the Sea in the beautiful Pontins Resort, 
absolutely cruise to victory at Gommel 2023 and overcome old clutch gods at Super Smash Con to win three majors in a row. Zayn had truly come into form in this year's race, looking reminiscent of the Titan from 2020. It felt like it was only a matter of time before Zayn locked in his fifth major and shut out everyone else. All the while, Cody had been looking rough to the point him and Zayn had only actually met once in bracket. And well, it wasn't pretty. I don't think it's any coincidence that this happened. With his money struggles still unable to find a team, plans to move house and also being diagnosed with malignant skin cancer that was caught early enough to be harmless, but would still require surgery. All of this must have been weighing on Cody's mind pretty heavily, with the pressure to perform growing even greater with each underperformance. No one would have blamed Cody for throwing in the towel then and there. To stop Zayn from locking in that number one, he would have to prevent him from winning the next three majors. Shine would once again be pivotal in deciding not only the number one for the year, but also Cody's future in Melee as a whole. A close brush with Kadoran would have you worry for Cody's ability versus Marth this weekend. However, he would be able to get a good night's rest, a good night's sleep, before top 8, where he would inevitably meet Zane's Marth in winner's finals. A loss here could be pivotal. At this level of the game, winning a grand finals reset is very rare. For his stamina, he would need to take the win here. Cody would put on a clinic in winners finals, not just 3-0ing Zayn, but beating him twice on FD, making it look like Marv's recovery just sucks and placing so much pressure onto Zayn that he was making mistake after mistake. You wouldn't think that this was a player with so much on his back Yet here he was, looking like the cleanest fox we've maybe ever seen. Zayn would inevitably free-o his opponent Aklo and losers, and come back for grands with a fresh breath. Would Cody be able to hold on to that momentum and keep Zayn from locking in that number one? Well, if set one was anything to go by, the king wasn't about to let this rambunctious upstart take his crown without a fight. Zayn answers Cody's 3-0 right back. With brutally efficient punishes, it looked like Cody never got a chance to get going. Even if the games went to last stock, it never felt like Zayn was in any danger. Now, with Grand's reset, would Cody be able to snap awake and take the tournament? Or was Zayn going to lock in that first place here and now? Cody comes out swinging in game one, but Zayn answers right back and thanks to some absolutely devastating punishes, ends up taking the fourth game in a row. Cody would need to get it together, as Shine was fast slipping away. Another brutal punish out the gate, but Zayn answers right back, and again, another huge combo sends Cody below the stage for what should be a free edge guard, allowing Zayn to once again steal the momentum. But Cody skirts perfectly around the F smash and survives with an arsenal of recovery mix-ups. Cody swings the stock back in his favor and looks like he's getting back into that first set's flow. They go back and forth, but Cody is making Zayn work for each stock. And with a clean sequence, he takes his first game of Grand Finals. He, he has still it. has it. He, yeah. saved it. he does oh. have it, but it doesn't matter. However, with Zayn on form, it was time for him to release his domain expansion, FD infinite chain grabs. Cody would be unable to nullify the sure hit effect of Zayn's domain, and now Cody with only one game left to stay in contention for number one. One game left to show himself that he could do this despite the mountain of pressure on his back. Could he find the strength in himself to take on this king? Look at the audience and say, nah, I'd win. Like, oh, 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 that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.
Ladies and that gentlemen, is it. the last game ever of Sean Game 5. The oh, 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 he's 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 he was ready for that stop. slide off. Hey, hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the job is finally that finished. Was so crazy. Cody takes Shine home. After an incredible two games with both players firing on all cylinders, Cody showed he was the hardest fox to kill in the entire world, living to ridiculous percents consistently. Suddenly, there was hope. With one more major win, Cody would even up Zayn's major wins. And their set record was as close. This was beginning to look like it could go down to the absolute wire. Could we see the deciding tournament be the big house? The last true major plan for this year? If Cody could win Riptide, he would be able to even it up. Unfortunately, life would once again get in the way of Cody. He would have to miss Riptide due to the surgery for his skin cancer. Though, as fate might have it, Zayn had no plans to turn up to Riptide, meaning that this major was essentially null and void for who would take number one. What this did mean now though, was that to even things up with Zayn, Cody would need to win the Big House, a tournament on the same level of difficulty and prestige as Genesis, something that he had never achieved. But if he was to do it, now was the time. And if he could beat Zayn while doing it, the head-to-head -head could swing in his favour. The Big House 11 would be the place where number one in the world is decided. So, how would it all play out? Cody would lose round one of winners top 48 to a Samus player called Morse Code, who had also upset JMook at Gommel earlier in the year. So, I guess that was that. To pull off a run from losers round two to win Big House would be an insane feat. Getting to grand finals would be a challenge, let alone win. Zayn, the master of consistency after being upset only one round from top eight last year, could only muster a fourth place. I guess that's just how this story ends. The king reigns strong, and we will see if anyone can stop him in the year 2024. There's no way Cody could possibly do this. Hang on, what the fuck's going on behind me? <laughs> 3 0 over Hbox, 3 0 over Answer. Cody was on an absolute tear. Unluckily for him though, to get to Grand Finals, he would once again need to topple the people that give him the most trouble in Zane and Mango. And as always, they weren't going to make it particularly easy for him. Cody had made it all the way back to Grand Finals, and luckily for him, in this Grand Finals, he was far from the underdog. An unlikely opponent was waiting for him, in Plop. Unfortunately for Plop though, he had not managed to beat Cody since 2021 in any of the seven sets they played since. However, this run had been grueling for Cody. He had fought his way through almost every single threat available at the tournament. If he could close out this run though, it would quite possibly go down as one of the greatest, if not the greatest losers run ever. Plup would come out the gates swinging with a two stop, looking ready to take his first big house. But Cody would answer right back. 
Club was not going to let the momentum slip away though, and with an absolutely destructive sequence of punishes, would take Game 3 in a free stock, putting the tournament at game point. Yet Cody, after such a grueling run, on the brink of losing it all, is laughing. A man who had so much pressure on him, and life kick him down, is able to sit in that chair and laugh. Which can only mean one thing, that his mental is pretty stable, and that this isn't over yet. He closes his eyes, takes a few deep breaths, and presses start once again. Answering back, can he now close out the set and reset the bracket? In game 5 to do so, he would need to stop this pattern of them destroying each other and take back momentum from Plum. Cody would reset the bracket, steal momentum from Cup, and from this point, never look back. Stock after stock, Cody looks stronger and more confident, while Plup seems to just be wrestling stocks away. At no point does Cody look uncomfortable. Cody does it. He pulls off quite possibly the best losers run of all time. And now it's time to answer the question. Did he do it? Did he topple the titan and take the throne of the king? After Big House, both players were equal on major wins, so how was their head-to-head? -head? Oh, wow, they are literally dead even. Well, let's break it down more then, even further. Did either of them have any amount of games over the other? I, I don't think I have ever seen something like this. I don't think we have ever seen something like this as a community. Two people going dead even until the last moment it wouldn't be impossible to find a number one. If we really dive into their runs and attendance over the year, I'm sure our stat masters who make the ranking could do it. However, with these two dead even on points, an arbiter would come in and go against all procedure to make the end of this year go out, not with a whimper, but with a bang, and leave it down to a last lap race to the finish. Except this time, there would be no clear advantage, just two competitors brawling it out for the number one spot. Oh, that's going to do it! That's going to do it! Cody does it again! This breaks it off! He's going to win the side! He's going to do it! It's up there! He's going to win! Cody wins! 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 Zane versus Cody in a first to 10 match to decide who would be the best player in the world. Agreed on by both players and the people running the rankings, this match was going to be something that we might never see again. So here we go. In one corner, we have Zane, a titan of the game, a king who has clung on to his crown for three years through hard work, adaptation, and consistently swatting away all who challenge him, looking to further extend his legacy. And in the other, we have Cody, someone who came up in the shadow of a titan to make a name for himself in his own way. Someone who has battled against life's hardships, multiple surgeries to claw his way out of that shadow. Now looking to be the first ever solo fox main to be crowned number one in the end of year rankings. There is no money on the line, only the pride of being crowned the best Super Smash Bros. Melee player in the world. That's the one thing Cody does. He knows how to kill Zane. Give me a moist Don't cut her roll. Hundred. Oh, oh there's the Zane I know. Oh. Oh. Wow! Jesus. Get Fox Christ. McCloud. Cody versus Marth oh. right now. It's one of the like. Is that wow. Jesus Christ? Yup. 
straight. He's looking the greatest. Oh, he can't get out! Oh, Goodbye! And we have the first four stock. We're going to take a little break, it looks like, which I, I don't okay. mind. I think, I think a little time out's fine. I think a time. All right, this is game 13. He's in Cody percent. He missed that edge guard. And yeah. Cody is the so greatest real. melee player of all time Mass. at this percent. Careful. Oh, wow. So, it's too hard. What a down no. to kill. That wow. kill. to seven if Cody wins one more he is the best in the world first ever solo fox game best player in the world unless oh, that's why you say it <laughs> a bear Way so he doesn't hit Zane. Cody is has the won the first to ten. He is number one in the world. Ten to seven. Wow. Cody is shaky. Can't believe it. On December 15th, 2023, a titan would fall, and Zane's reign would officially come to an end. Cody Schwab would be the one to complete the quest and be crowned Melee's new best player in the world. He had beaten down everything life had thrown at him. All the circumstances and hardship that came his way, he battled through for what he loved doing to achieve the pinnacle of the sport. Yet, this isn't where the story ends. From the fall of the era of the gods, we saw a titan emerge. And from the titan's reign, we saw many stand on equal footing. But the rivalry that blossomed between these two, the uncanny similarities in their come-ups, is something special that we may never see again. And I, for one, am so excited for what's to come next. If the last two years are anything to go by, I'm sure I can expect another year of incredible melee. Will we see Mango return to form, or maybe Jamuk will be the next challenger to truly come into his own? All I know is that I'll be there, with you guys ready to witness and take on whatever the next quest may be. Yo, announcement for the people who actually reached the end of the video. Um, I'm actually launching a second channel with the release of this video that will have all of my live stream content on it. So if you want to see more of my face, the link will be in the pinned comment down below. And, you know, the first video will hopefully be out the day after this video comes out. And as always, I want to give a special thank you to my patrons. Without them, I could never have considered even making a video like this and putting this much effort in. So special thanks to Biss, Coconia, Dan Landon, Garrick Ford, why Am I Clumsy, Mr. Business, Snugs, and User Error. If you want to join the Patreon for exclusive content and Discord access, just check out the link down below. And more importantly, thank you so much for watching this video.